Hello and welcome back to Let's Build. So today we're going to put all of this land to use that's along the road with a nice big farmstead. Before we get there though, we need to do a bit of landscaping and get the area ready for some buildings. And while we're doing that, we've also got a small road that branches off to the right and goes behind Dragon Skull Mountain. But that's something for later. Terraforming this area has been really fun and really cool. The first time I did it, I didn't know what I was going to build here, so basically I really just wanted a way to get the road through it. But now we've actually come to having to build on the area, it does need a few changes. And now we have that area ready to build on, but I wanted to decorate the background just a little bit. The mountains that ring the entirety of our kingdom are a great placeholder, they look pretty good in the distance. But as we build near them, I want more and more to landscape them into a nicer looking area. So the farm has a few major parts and those are as follows. It's gonna have a big barn to store stuff. It's gonna have a big stables because everybody loves horses. It also needs a farmhouse, a place for the farmer family to live and go about their lives. And finally, the thing that a farm needs is fields. And this is gonna be a big part of this build. We're gonna have some huge cascading fields that I hope are gonna look great. So for the barn, I wanted a big kind of domed roof. Instead of a diagonal V-shaped roof, I definitely wanted a half pipe kind of shape. But first we're gonna put down a frame of stone pillars as a base for what the barn is gonna be. Then above that stone layer, we can start to add some things like logs for the framework, basically what we're gonna put the roof on top of. And then finally, we can start to use red concrete to shape what we're gonna have our roof look like. One of the bigger parts of this build was getting this roof in particular to look correct. It didn't quite look right no matter what I did. But once I was kind of happy with the shape, I wanted to do something that I usually mostly avoid doing. And that was changing the edges around the roof and some of the bracings along the top to be a different texture of wood. It is a really easy and effective way of adding contrast to a rooftop or actually anything that you're building. And to be honest, I think the roof does look pretty cool with that on. Also, windows mix up things a little. But beyond that, structurally the barn is kind of complete, and all that's left to do is some more of the detail. I wasn't quite happy with the curve of the roof. It was a tiny bit flat and it made the building look too short, too squatted. So I cut part of the top of the roof off and raised it up just a little. and then did one more pass on the detail around the edge of the barn. And one of the cool things that I'm doing here is using trap doors on the blocks where the logs change direction. It can look a bit off, but using trap doors to cover those up makes the build look a lot neater. And now we're gonna do something super, super cheeky. There's a farmhouse that I built a while ago over near to the kingdom. And it was a build that I was so happy with that I figured, you know what? Why can't I just copy that and then paste it over here? It's a great looking building. So that's what I did. When you're building something on the scale that we are, reusing assets like this that you've built before is just a really good way to flesh it out, but also lower your workload. I mean, it's something you see all the time in games when you go into a house that looks exactly like the house you went into like half an hour ago. And the same idea works here as well. Once it was pasted, making it fit was pretty easy, just adding some dirt around the edges to make it look like it belongs. And now with two buildings down, it's time to work out what goes between these two. So just like the farmhouse, I've borrowed the timber cart that we built for the lumber camp a few videos ago. But I refit it with hay bales instead of the wooden logs so that it fits with the farm. And now I've also used coarse dirt and gravel to paint down a zone where we can build the staples. And this looks like nice 
naturally trodden down land. And I've also speckled the edges of the ground to keep it looking more natural, like a well-trodden area, and not so much something man-made. Although technically, if it's trodden down by man, so the last buildings are going to be some stables. First we're doing a smaller set of stables here, just a group of four. And then near to the mountain, and this is going to be a very simple build. I just used some wooden slabs on the roof, logs and some walls and some fences as a simple place to store your horses. No fuss. But then that left a large space in between these little stables and the barn, and I wanted to fill that empty space with a well. On its own, nothing super special about this well, but when you look at it as part of the bigger picture, it looks pretty neat. Now we still have a huge amount of space to fill, so we're going to fill it with another much bigger stables. We've already got like a few small pens, but I want a much bigger building dedicated to where we can put the horses. And this building takes some of the ideas of the barn, or the other barns that we've made around the, around the world and then combines them with the stables that go on either side of the building. It's a relatively simple build, but it really does help bring the farm to life. Plus, it's also a symmetrical build, so once half was done, flipping it over was easy peasy. And so that means half of the farm is done. There's a little decoration here and there. We've also added little sections of wall to the path and these things help with the overall feel. But it's time to zoom out and think about our fields. Now, with the fields, I wanted to go big, and the contours of the land didn't quite leave enough space for the fields I want, so it is back to terraforming and landscaping to give ourselves more room to work with. And once I felt like these were the right shape, it was time to put down the fields themselves. I wanted to avoid square fields. They do look very boring and a little bit too Minecraft. And when you go as big as we're going, you really do have a bit more creative license to have some more quirky shapes. So using red concrete, I've just edged the contour of the map here. And this is where I want the fields to be. There's going to be three layers of fields in front of the farm. But near the back and the buildings, I wanted to have some more regular square fields where we're going to put some wheat. And now with all those fields in position and everything framed how I want it to look like, it was time to change those red blocks into something else. So because the fields are in a regular shape and they're on a much bigger scale, I wanted to do something a little bit different. So instead of changing them all to the same block, like walls or cobblestone, uh, cobblestone stairs or whatever, I changed all of the red concrete that you can see into a mix of mossy blocks, slabs, and walls. And they're all totally random, so the area looks much more natural. And you really have a feel for like a natural loose wall for a field, like you might find in a real farm out in the countryside.
and it's something that I'm really happy with. The look, it, it's just amazing. Also, from a distance, it looks great, but up close it doesn't look too weird either. And now it was time to fill these fields with something. Now, I'm really tired of potatoes and carrots, both in real life and in game. No, I don't think you could ever be uh, tired of potatoes. But I wanted to move away from the conventional Minecraft crops. And I figured, why not use the taller two block high flowers that Minecraft already has? Roses, lilacs and ponies. So I started planting those in. Also, to help frame the fields, I've mixed in oak leaves in between the walls of the separate contour fields. This helps a lot, again, with the contrast of the fields, and it makes them really pop. And now it's time to keep going with this theme and do the rest of the fields. This took me a lot of time. I mean, I couldn't really think of a better way of placing down all of these flowers manually. Because they're two blocks, you can't really just copy and paste or use commands to do it. Also with the irregular shape of the field, that made it hard too. So I kind of just had to place down every single flower by hand. But that wasn't a problem, I slapped on some music and put my face to the grindstone. So the final field I wanted to try putting down coarse dirt as the base instead of the grass that we already have. And after it was complete, I realized, actually, you know what? Coarse dirt is the much better look. So I had to repeat that and change all of the blocks underneath the flowers into coarse dirt for the rest of the fields. And now onto the wheat fields. There's probably a simpler way of making them, but you know what? I quite enjoyed manually using a hoe. It made me feel a bit like farmer again. But I feel like the fields need a little bit something extra, you know? So I've put down a few tactically placed man-made trees. And then I've populated the wheat field with some seeds and this is just regular Minecraft wheat. And I continue to decorate the remains of the farm with more path, some fence posts, and just some general TLC. And we've done it. Boom, build complete. Dawn breaks, the sun rises, and we have a huge cascading flower farm to greet the light of day. This build covers a lot of land, and while it's not structurally super ambitious, it's a big leap towards getting the kingdom complete. Anyway, here's a few up close and personal shots of what the farm looks like. And I'm very happy with how this build turned out. And there we go, 
there's still a lot of this valley to build on, so next episode, I'm thinking I'm going to be building a mountain castle. Hit like if you enjoyed, subscribe for more, and until next time, take care.